In what aspect is God's love special? Reverend Dr. Holly Namogun, pastor of United Methodist Church, translator, Mrs. Irene Park, reader, Mr. Jacob Lee. God, I do not feel your love at the skin level. God, the vocabulary which is used the most among people is love. It is hard to find any sermon, column, novel, drama, movie, or a song which does not include the word love. But this word love has been abused for so long that the meaning is degraded. So, even if you say God is love, there are many cases that people do not feel your divine love and even imagine a cruel father instead. Even though we mention God's love almost all the time, frankly, we cannot feel it tangibly. The meaning is too abstract to feel it at the skin level. Could you explain the difference between your divine love and human love? which people talk about so often. My love is universal and all-inclusive. I even love unbelievers. I love all equally. There is no such thing as partiality in my love. I bestow same love on Jews as well as on non-Jews. I let everyone breathe the air without discrimination. My love is universal. As I love Sarah, I also love Hazur. As I love Isaac, I also love Ishmael. Even though I love Jonah, those people in Nineveh are also my children whom I cannot give up. All of them are my children whom I have created. The reason for embracing them in my bosom is that they are my heartbreaking children who were abducted and cannot be with me. You could never understand that love. Even though I am God of Israel, I am also God of all nations. Your love may be limited to your own family or church families, but my abundant love is more than enough to embrace the whole population of the world. My love is wide, deep, high and long. It is much bigger than the universe and it is impossible for you to grasp the concept with your perception. That is why my love seems abstract and superficial and you cannot feel it at the skin level. My love is well-rounded. People want to possess and control the person they love by saying, you are mine. But my love is of high character. I do not force nor threaten. I never compel nor intimidate until my loved ones willingly open their hearts. I wait until they trust me enough to open up and I respect that love. I treat them valuably. I try to establish the relationship of shalom, personal relationships, and never think they are my possessions. When you consider the other person is your possession, you treat with insolence and out of character, and you want to control as you want. These vocabularies do not exist in my love dictionary. My love is everlasting love. Even Apostle Paul said love is patient, but my love is eternal and everlasting. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Even though patient, long-suffering love is quite sacrificial, my love is infinite. It begins from eternity and lasts forever. People worry if my love would end any time. Eros, man and woman, and filial, friendship, 
can be wonderful when things are well. But when things go badly, one could leave the relationship and abandon the other person anytime. My love is eternal. Compare it this way. Human love in life is momentary, whereas my love is eternal and everlasting. My love is based on the covenant. The love of that covenant came into full bloom on the death of God's only begotten Son. I am different from you mortals who are attracted emotionally and physically. I am love based on the word and the covenant. My love is the covenant and the promise. Since it is based on the integrity of Christ, the sacrifice and death on the cross, it is everlasting and does not waver. It is fundamentally different from human love, which is easy to fall in and easy to break up emotionally as well as physically. This love was exchanged with death of Christ. Therefore, this love of covenant is accomplished and solid. Since it is based on the sacrifice of Christ, it is a promised love on a solid foundation. It is love of, he said, God's mercy. It is a holy matrimonial covenant. It is valid until death separates apart. Forgiveness is included in my love. Forgiveness is already included in my love. One ought to cover the shortcomings of loved ones, such as between husband and wife and among family members, but the reality is not so. For humans, shortcomings can become the reasons for breaking up the relationships. But when I love, forgiveness is already implied in it. In the heart of the prodigal son's father, love and forgiveness existed together. He waited in front of the door for all that time just to forgive. If we had never forgiven our children, would it ever have been possible for them to exist until now? If Cain had no such forgiveness, would it have been possible for him to be liberated from fear and walk publicly? Cain's mark implies that forgiveness is already included on the other side of love. We can see the road to salvation and forgiveness by the blood of Jesus Christ through Adam's clothing made from animal skins. My love does not see the qualifications, but the being, life, itself is the object of my love. Humans calculate the qualifications before entering a relationship. If the terms are not plausible, they give up the relationship. But I do not categorize my loved ones according to their qualification. I love their being, life, and value their existence. For life, it is not possible to make a distinction between superiority and inferiority, nor discriminate. All are precious. I accept as they are and love them. This is the main difference from human love. Even parents show favoritism according to their children's achievements and abilities, but I love as they are and honor them valuably. Abilities, qualifications, and achievements, such things cannot become the roadblocks in my love because I created one of them by molding and bore them through toiling of childbirth, my love can be described as in spite of love, still loving in spite of. Even though my love is unconditional, it does not mean I tolerate self-indulgence, 
pruning is part of my love. Unconditional love does not mean anything is acceptable. My love goes hand in hand with righteous exhortations and disciplines in order to correct the pathways in life. This is because love is not rude. This is the heart of parents who must chastise children for discipline. Since no discipline means allowing alienation from the society, true love is to correct and discipline for the purpose of the children's happiness. This is the love of righteousness, which corrects and trains. Since love without righteousness leads to self-indulgence, if you ever overlook, it is not deep love. The reason I prune at times is because I love them. It is difficult for me to prune the branches as it is painful for those who are being pruned. But this is a necessary process for them to mature and grow into the point of managing the outer man and produce the fruit in life. Only then they can be loved by all. My love, in spite of everything, never gives up and always initiates. I love first and I seek first. It is not love out of reluctance, but it is proactive. That is why I never give up this love nor give away to somebody else. My love grows hotter and human love grows colder. The main characteristic of human love is that if not satisfied, it gets cold immediately. That is a very selfish love. Maybe only the parent's love for their children could be labeled instinctive. Love between a man and a woman is very self-centered and egotistical. As I said, in spite of, at the beginning, even when they are in the middle of committing sins, I do not throw them away or give them up. Despite everything, I always continue to love them and give mercy. Are you getting the hang of it by now? Wow, this is my first time to hear about your love all in all. But Lord, I feel my heart is too confined to embrace such huge love. I am not the right vessel to hold your love. So I am very much frustrated. Dear God, grant me a bigger heart to hold love. Your love, which is bigger than the Pacific Ocean and bigger than the universe, not only is it impossible to imagine, I am afraid my emotion has dried up. Lead us swim into the sea of your love and invite those who desire to do so into your bosom and touch them. And please God, do not be disappointed when I cannot sense your huge love. Now that I have heard everything you said, I feel even more overwhelmed because I am such a tiny vessel to hold your love. If I experience all your love, I would surely faint. Please allow the appropriate amount for me to experience. That would be the only way for me. Thank you and thank you. You can order these three books from Amazon Kindle. 365 Prayers of Blessing for your children, theory and practice of land work, the Lord's visitation for 14 days, my beloved bride, heal as I reveal. This video is made by Reverend Dr. Holly Namo Byun Lee, who is a minister of the United Methodist Church. She got a degree of Doctor of Ministry at Claremont Theological Seminary in California. She is an executive director of Menua Ministry. She carries a healing ministry. She is an author of 40 books and led 1,000 revival services and over 200 seminars for ministers. Now, she lives in California with her husband, Reverend Peter Yongtek Lee.
She is the fourth daughter of Dr. Sung Bong Yun, former president of Methodist Theological University in Seoul, Korea. In Hebrew, Menoa is an adjective that describes being restful. We use the term Menoa as a noun. Please subscribe to Yunnamo TV Healing Channel, News from Heaven. Thank you for watching this video.